Hi everybody, welcome back to the halls of Curious University, better known as Curious U. I'm Miss Tracy. And I'm Miss Katie Jane. This week's theme is Eek! Creepy Crawlies. And before we get to our story, why don't we creep on over and learn some facts. Scientists estimate that there are 1.4 million billion insects on Earth. That's 200 million insects for every human being. That's a fact! Insects are invertebrates. Instead of a backbone, they have a hard outer casing. Their bodies are divided into three sections, head, thorax, and abdomen. Most insects have three pair of legs for a total of six, and many have two pairs of wings. That's a fact. Spiders are not insects. They are members of the arachnid family. Spiders have two body segments, cephalothorax and abdomen, and eight legs. Most spiders make silk, which they use to create webs and capture prey. It takes about 60 minutes to spin a web. That's a fact. The average house has 30 spiders. That's a fact. A scientist who studies insects is called an entomologist. A scientist who studies spiders is called an arachnologist. That is a fact. This week's story is based on the book Unstinky by Andy Rash a brand new book about a stink bug who doesn't stink. You know what else doesn't stink? The amazing story pieces that Miss Grace made for us to help us tell the story. Great job, Miss Grace. Now, let's see what's stinking or not stinking around here. Bud was a happy stink bug most of the time, but not when there was a stinking contest because Bud had to compete with the biggest stinkers ever. P.U. Bottoms, Lord Stinkington, and the Fumigator. And every time Bud tried to stink, something went wrong. Smokestack, dog do. Dead fish. Flowers. He always made good smells. Gym sock. Outhouse. Sour milk. Pine tree. Armpit. Bug spray. Rotten eggs. New car. Another big stinking failure. But Bud had an idea. He rubbed his bottom on an onion. He stomped around in manure. He even got sprayed by a skunk. Pshh. Once Bud was sure he totally reeked, he announced his own stinking contest. But as all the stink bugs lined up, Limburger cheese, burning wig, garbage truck, fresh baked bread. Uh, fourth place again. Bud wandered off to mope and ran into Major Funk, a stink bug with a high rank. What's wrong, Bud? I can't stink, sir. I don't know how. Nonsense. Every stink bug can stink. Just do what I do. Stomp your feet. Wave your arms. And waggle your bottom. Mm. 
Gunpowder. Candy cane? <laughs> hmm. Well, keep working on it, bud. You're sure to stink, uh, someday. Yes, sir. Bud did keep working on it. All day he stomped and waved and waggled. He jumped and slid and twirled. He flopped and reached and twitched. But every smell that came out of him was flowers, flowers, flowers. Rose, Daisy, Tula, Poppy, Daffodil, Gardenia, Violet, Petunia? Bzzz. Hi, I'm April. Sorry to interrupt your dancing. I thought I smelled flowers. That flower smell? It's me. I'm trying to stink, but I'm no good at it. Well, maybe stinking isn't your thing, but you sure can dance. Will you come with me to a dance party at the Hive? Do you think they'll even let me in? I'm a stink bug. Don't be silly. They'll be happy to see you. Come on. The bees were not happy to see Bud. Who let a stink bug in here? He'll stink up the whole hive. I'm going to leave now. Nobody wants me here. We'll show them Bud on the dance floor. Bud and April dance. Did you smell that aroma? Stink bug, you are always welcome. Bzzz. Bud went back and told his stink bug friends about dancing. They had never heard of it, but they gave it a shot. wasn't their thing. Although the exercise improved their stinking quite a bit. Dinosaur poo! Cheese factory! Volcano! They thanked Bud as he said goodbye and Bud went back to do his thing. again. I'm here to tell you about this week's hands-on STEAM activity. We are going to play a spider matching game and what you'll need is a paper plate, clothespins, and some imagination. Let's focus on the language skills that we can practice with this matching game. First, look right here. What letter is that? That's right, a B. It's a lowercase b. Now, can you look at the clothespins over here? Can you see the uppercase B? Did you find it? I think I did. Yeah. And so you're gonna clip the uppercase B next to the lowercase B. Now, let's look at the next letter. The next letter is an uppercase G. So we're going to be looking for a lowercase G. Is this the right one? I don't think so. What about that one? Nope. This one? Yay, we found it. So let's take the lowercase g and we're gonna clip it right here beside the uppercase g. Now, 
we're going to practice opposites. This word is U-P, and that spells up. What is the opposite of up? Very good. Down. We're looking for the word down. All right, that's not a word, right? <laughs> so we know that this one, D-O-W-N, spells down. And down is the opposite of up. So we're going to clip it right here. You can also practice matching colors to the actual color word. Here's a color word right here, R-E-D. And R-E-D spells good. It spells red. And this last clothespin has a red dot on it. So let's clip it right here. And now let's check in with Miss Katie Jane. You can also work on math skills. Let's take a look right here. Five plus one. What does five plus one equal? That's right, six. Do you see the number six down on this side? Oh, I spotted it too. So I'm going to just clip that on right. Boop. There we go. What's under that? That's not addition. That is subtraction. Four minus two. Hmm. If you take two away from four, what do you get? That is right. This number right here. Two. Four minus two equals two. Wait a minute. This is not a number. T-H-R-E-E. -E. What does that spell? Three. Do you see a three clothespin down there on the carpeting? I see it too. There it is. Number three. And finally, that kind of looks like the face of a die. How many dots are right there? One, two, three, four, five. So we'll take our final clip, the number five, and clip it on. And now look at that. Our spider has eight legs, just like other spiders. We learned that when we learned the facts. And remember, these are just a few of the learning games you can play with this matching game. If you can think of some more things, make sure you do. And make sure you join us next week at Curious University. What will we be learning about that time? Well, I'll give you a hint. It's under the moon and stars. That's right, we're thinking big and far away next week. I know you're curious about it, so I know you'll be back. Thanks, guys. See you soon. This story time is brought to you by the Hoover Public Library.